The pelvic bones are part of the skeleton embedded in the pelvic region of the trunk. The pelvic girdle is composed of the appendicular hip bones, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis oriented in a ring and connects the pelvic region of the spine to the lower limbs. The pelvic spine consists of the sacrum and the coccyx. The dorsal aspect of the hip joint is supplied by one or more branches arising from the nerve to the quadratus femoris muscle and gemellus inferior muscle. It has been suggested the latter branch be named the muscular articularis nerve of the sacral plexus. Sometimes there is a concomitant branch directly from the sciatic nerve. The posterior articular branches mainly contribute to the proprioceptive component of the joint, while the nociceptive fibers provide sensation mainly to the anterior capsule. The anterior aspect of the hip joint is supplied by articular branches of the femoral, obturator, and accessory obturator nerves. Articular branches of the femoral nerve innervate the superior lateral quadrant. Articular branches of the femoral nerve and the accessory obturator nerve innervate the superior medial quadrant. The inferior lateral quadrant is innervated by the femoral and the obturator articular branches, while the inferior medial quadrant is innervated by the articular branches of all three nerves. Our bony references for the pain block are the anterior superior iliac spine, the anterior inferior iliac spine, the pubic ramus, and the iliopubic eminence. The femoral nerve arises from the dorsal divisions of the ventral rama of the second, third, and fourth lumbar nerves. Femoral articular branches separate from the main trunk of the nerve around the L5 level and dive deep into the iliacus muscle. These branches terminate at the anterior capsule of the hip after traveling over the pubic ramus while being covered by the psoas muscle. The obturator nerve emerges from the ventral divisions of the second, third, and fourth lumbar nerves. It then enters the thigh through the obturator foramen and divides into the anterior and a posterior branch. Articular branches arise more frequently from the trunk of the obturator nerve than from either the posterior or the anterior division. The accessory obturator nerve is present in about 30% of cases. It arises from the ventral divisions of the third and fourth lumbar nerves. It then descends along the medial border of the psoas major, crosses the superior ramus of the pubis, and passes under the pectineus where it divides into numerous branches. One of them supplies the pectineus muscle, another is distributed to the hip joint, while a third communicates with the anterior branch of the obturator nerve. In the inguinal region, the iliopsoas muscle covers all the aforementioned articular branches. The fascia iliaca covers the iliopsoas muscle, while the femoral nerve lies in a groove between the iliacus and the psoas muscle. The fascia lata is the deep fascia of the thigh. It encloses the thigh muscles and forms the outer limit of the fascial components of the thigh. Iran and Ping first described the Ping block in 2018. This technique is described as a unique alternative replacing other approaches that block the anterior articular capsular branches of the hip while spraying the motor branches of the femoral nerve. We use a low-frequency curved array transducer, although in thinner patients, a linear transducer may be used. With the patient in a supine position, the ultrasound probe is placed in a transverse plane over the anterior superior iliac spine. Once the ASIS is clearly identified, the transducer must be rotated 45 degrees clockwise for the right or 45 degrees counterclockwise for the left, aligning with the ASIS, the AIIS, IPE, and pubic tubercle. Transducer is then slid along this described line in a medial direction until the AIIS, IPE, psoas tendon, and muscles are clearly identified. Our anatomical references for the pain block are the iliopubic eminence, 
the anterior superior iliac spine, and the psoas tendon, which lies between the described bony references. By sliding the probe distally or with a gentle tilt, we are able to identify the head of the femur and the joint capsule of the hip. At this point, we return to our initial position to identify the reference points again. With the ultrasound probe placed over the ASIS transverse line and with the ASIS identified, the transducer is then rotated 45 degrees again, aligning the ASIS, the AIIS, IPE, and pubic ramus for dynamic viewing. By sliding the transducer over the described plane, the AIIS will be identified as a hyperechoic prominence with the iliac muscle over it. The psoas muscle and the psoas tendon will be seen lying between the ASIS and the IPE. With a distal slide or gentle tilt, we identify the head of the femur and joint capsule of the hip. We then return to our starting point to perform our initial approach with the needle. We recommend using a 20 to 22 gauge 100 millimeter needle. The approach is performed in plane and from lateral to medial. This approach will be in an insertion angle of about 35 to 40 degrees until bony contact is made under the psoas tendon. 15 to 20 milliliters of a long lasting local anesthetic is then injected under the psoas muscle and psoas tendon while observing to confirm displacement. Again, we clearly identify our anatomical references and a 20 to 22 gauge 100 millimeter needle is inserted in plane from lateral to medial. We should be careful not to pass through the psoas tendon during puncture, depositing 15 to 20 milliliters of long-lasting local anesthetic between the psoas tendon and the pubic branch and observing the displacement of the psoas tendon. A pain block is indicated for treating pain after intracapsular hip fractures as a motor sparing block for hip surgery and chronic pain. No systemic toxicity has been described, although this issue is a common complication in volume-dependent blocks. Quadriceps weakness has been described secondary to local anesthetic spread to the femoral nerve. We recommend not exceeding the described volume, and if you are utilizing a catheter, we recommend starting the rate at 6 milliliters per hour or less.